Hello friends, welcome back to my book review channel. My name is Phoenix and I have some amazing books for you today. Um, I actually read these one after another and so I thought, well, why not do, because they are both female thrillers, uh, well, female based, like there's definitely female issues wrapped up in each of these novels. Um, I decided to do them in one go. Uh, so, without further ado, I'll start with Magpie, which is the one I read first. It's by Elizabeth Day. I, I just want to say right now that I figured out part of it, but I think Elizabeth Day threw that in there because it was such a small red herring that it totally distracted from what the real situation is. So just so you know, don't get up cocky like me because even if you think you got it figured out, I promise you, you don't. Um, Marissa is our main character. She's had a pretty tough, tough life. Uh, uh, she, she, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with her mom. Her dad is pretty much non-existent in her life. She kind of forces him out from what it seems like in the story. Basically, it seems like she only has one really good friend named Jazz. Um, and she, but she does have like a little bit of a career going for herself. She, uh, writes books and illustrates them for children. So like if a, it's kind of a cool idea. If like parents, I'm sure somebody does this, parents want a book with their kid's name in it, she'll write, a, and then they can like say what kind of story they want their kid involved in. So maybe little Johnny is going um, to slay a dragon or something, or I don't know, whatever. So, and then she'll draw that, she'll get a picture of the kid and try and make his features um, appear in a pretty, in a thing, in a book, whatever. So I think, I hope you understand what I was inelegantly trying to say there. So she does have a little career going for herself. She's fairly self-sufficient. And then she meets this guy named Jake. And within three months, like things are going really well between them. And even though um, Jazz kind of gives her a little bit of pushback. And there's here's kind of one of the first places where we see maybe Marissa gets a little bit involved with things. Um, you know, it's just the first little thing that tips us off that Marissa is not 100% healthy. I'll, I'll leave it at that. Um, everything's going swimmingly until Jake loses a big deal at work and he asks Marissa, do you, do you mind if we take in a lodger? And she says, you know, she's not paying rent. She's working from his house. Like she's moved into his house. Um, oh no, no. They, they found the house. She found the house and then he told her go ahead and get it. And then they moved in together. Um, but he pays the mortgage. And so she's like, yeah, I mean, of course, you know, her, her business is very, I mean, while she has one, it's very hit or miss. Uh, and the lodger moves in named Kate and she's fine in the beginning and they get along really well. But then after a while, Marissa notices, she starts to kind of seem like she feels like she belongs more than Marissa does. Like she's always trying to put her mug to the front. She seems to put her toothbrush right next to her, uh, Marissa's and Jake's. It's just a very odd situation to have happening when she's the lodger. She always has her shoes by the front door where people trip over them. So it's really bizarre. Um, and then unfortunately she starts to fear that Jake and Kate are having a relationship and that's where things kind of spiral out of control. And that's all I can say, but it is so good. And the best part is that's not the end of it. You get to the plot twist, you go through all the stuff that, I can't even tell you the point of view because I don't want you to, I don't want to be the person who spoils it because it's that good. Um, you get to the plot twist and you're like, okay, I got this, you know, like, okay, we can go from here, it's good. That's not the end of the plot twists in this book. Okay, um, so that's all I'm gonna say about that. 
Um, my expectations of this book, oh, it's set in England, so I really enjoyed that aspect of it. The unique key elements is the bit that you figure out. It's not the most important thing to the story. Um, the pacing, once the plot just comes, I felt like it was kind of hard to like, you just go down this whole other path. Um, the major themes in the novel are, of course, trust, relationships, in-laws, mental health, motherhood, and pregnancy, IVF. Fascinating. I didn't tell you, well, you, you can read it, but there's, yeah, it's really good. I highly recommend it if you're looking for a good thriller um, that deals with a lot of issues that women deal with. Um, this is a good novel for you. If you're a guy, you maybe like, and you like macho, much like you like the Tim Kennedy and Atomic Habits, this is probably not going to be a book for you. But you know, you never know. You can always give it a try. And then this book was beautiful. It's called Before You Knew My Name. It's by Jacqueline Bublitz. Um, this book was amazing. Um, that book was great. It was a really good read, a very well written, but this book was beautifully written. Like the language in it is beautiful. There were so many times. Also, she makes New York a character. And I, I, I really enjoy when somebody loves a city and makes it, makes you see the best in it. So that was fun. Um, so the premise of this novel is uh, that two women move to New York at this on the same day um, and basically she, Alice Lee she's the one you meet at first and she tells you pretty much right away that she's gonna die very quickly um, and so the whole the whole story revolves around these two women, Alice Lee, who's 18, an 18 year old girl, and Ruby Jones, uh, formerly of Australia, who moves, they're both running away from something and they both moved to New York to get away from it. So I'm gonna tell you about Alice Lee first. Um, her mom could just never really settle down with a man and so they moved around a lot and then something happened and Alice Lee ended up with her aunt um, who was basically just watching her till she came of age so that she could get boot her out whenever the government check stopped. Um, she ha she ends up staying with somebody for a while and that person kind of kicks her out and she gets really upset about it because it, it might not have been an appropriate relationship. Let's leave it at that. Um, and so she moves to New York with like $600 in her pocket because she answered an ad um, and she doesn't even know who she's going to be going to live with and you know it's it's just beautiful and it, except for her death unfortunately um, and so all the way along so then there's another woman Ruby Jones is coming from Australia she's leaving Australia because she has been having a relationship with a man who's not married yet He's engaged to become a, a to become married, and he's still having this affair with her, um, and she just doesn't have the strength to leave the relationship, and she knows she needs to get away from this. So she's packed up everything and moved off to New York um, on the exact same day that Alice Lee arrives. Um, they both react very differently to their arrival. They're, I mean, oh, I'll, did I tell you that Ruby Lee is in her late 30s, I think early 40s? Yeah, so there's a huge age difference between them. Um, when Alice, I feel like I could tell you this part. Okay, so it says, from the first devastating encounter, the two women form an unbreakable bond. I am gonna tell you this part. They don't meet until Alice, uh, Ruby is the one who discovers Alice's body. So, um, but Alice doesn't disappear. I, it's not like she's haunting Ruby in a way where like, you know, she's like, go this way or anything. I mean, there is a certain element of that, but it's much more subtle. It's not like she's speaking to her and saying, don't do this, do this. Um, but she's trying to help Ruby find out who she is because it's really thrown Ruby that she's discovered 
this, li this little girl, basically. Um, the point of view is Alice's omniscient uh, perspective. She tells us everything. Um, she goes back and forth between the history, her history and Ruby's history. Um, the major themes are coming of age and finding yourself, friendship and trusting your gut, which is so important for women. Um, but this book was amazing. I know I gave you a little bit of a spoiler, but you're gonna, I think she tells you that in the first couple of pages anyway. It's not like, it's, it's, it doesn't take long for you to know that. She, first of all, she tells you she's gonna die, and she tells you that Ruby's the one who finds her. So, I highly recommend those books if you like thrillers and you, and you want something that's female oriented. These are definitely, um, really good books. I, like I said, I read them one after another. They aren't particularly, I mean, while the subject matter is difficult in each of them, and like, I certainly cried at different points. I, I am a cry baby. Um, I certainly cried at different points in each of them. They're not like so overwhelming or dark, like maybe push or, um, you know, some of the other thriller or my dark Vanessa, they're not that difficult. Uh, to get through. They're actually really enjoyable. This one, Before You Knew My Name, more so simply because the writing is so lovely and so beautiful. So thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this book review. I hope it's been helpful and useful. Let me know in the comments. Give me a thumbs up. Don't give me a thumbs down. Um, take care and I'll see you next week.